Hello, I am King Mac, and I like to thank you all for watching this future presentation on YouTube. Be sure to enjoy a hot fresh cheeseburger with some french fries and a nice soft drink. Thank you for watching, and now here is our feature presentation of TT Burger Game Reviews on YouTube. Well, everybody, you're back. You want some more game reviews, eh? You ready, ready for some more stealth ninja action style in Tenchu series review? Well, you come to the right place. I'm your host, Tony, and welcome back to episode 175 of my TG for game reviews. This is part three of three. We're going to wrap things, things, things up here here in a bit here. But before I get started, I want to give a shout out to, to Free Green HD and Sub Zero MNX for King Mac. I, I know I mentioned this, 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 this in every episode, so credit goes to you guys. You guys are awesome. We have a lot to talk about here as we dive into the PlayStation 2 era of the Tenchu series where we have some more stealthy ninja action. But before we get started here, you're probably wondering what happened in the last part, those of you who missed it. Well, here we go. Hot and fresh off, off the TT Burger Grill, ready to be served, is a fresh TT Burger recap to show y'all what you missed. As I took a look at Tenchu 2, Birth of the Stealth Assassins, a, a prequel to Tenchu Stealth Assassins itself, and gave it a 9 out of 10 because it, w it was a fun game, as much fun as the first one. It had, a, it had some improvements, but had some holdover problems there as well, like with the controls and the stiffness and in the inside that, and like with the camera and stuff. So, overall, a, a, a great game. Definitely, and stuff that de definitely worth owning if you want some more Tenchu Ninja action. But today we're gonna go to zoom ahead to the year 2003 as we dive into the PlayStation 2 era of, of, of Tenchu. And Tenchu is stepping up into the next dimension here, and improvements were about were going to be made here as we have Tenchu Wrath of Heaven was exclusively for the PlayStation 2 on March 3rd, 2003. And what we have here is another funny ass stealth ninja game to reach if you like ninja. Tenchu's Wrath of Heaven is is an improvement over over the first two games, definitely. But it still has some holdover problems from the first two games, though. But we'll talk about that later. Tenchu Wrath of Heaven feels once again like you are ninja doing all the badass ninja moves from the first two games, and we get a solid game introduces Tenchu to the PlayStation 2, and it's a fantastic game overall. Once again, you choose from the two Azuma Clan ninjas, Rikimaru and Ayami. We play as Ayami once again, and you get you get a third ninja unlocked. When you beat the two st two stories, I didn't mention this in in the Tenchu 2 review because I didn't want to be in any spoilers there. But looking back, I should have mentioned that you can unlock a lot like a third story once once you beat it with both the characters. The story this time is broken up into the, into three stories for each ninja. They don't fit together with each other, but that's okay. They do not they do not need to be. It's it's fine that way. But we'll talk about the main part of the story here. It takes place after Tenchu stealth assassins where Lord Mello was defeated. Rikimaru was left in Lord Mello's fortress trying to to, to to provide an escape route for Ayame and Prince Kiku whom she had rescued. Rikimaru is trapped and left for dead while Ayame escapes. A year later, Rikimaru managed to survive being left for dead and reports to Lord Gota. But unknown to both Gota and Ayame and them, the real Rikimaru is trapped in the 20th century trying to find a way back to his home in the 16th century. There's more story to it there, but I'll leave it at that because I did not want to spoil it for anybody, those who want to play the game. It's a great story, and deep too, deeper than it was in the, in, in the, in the first two games. Tenchu 2 Birth of Stealth Assassins had a great storyline, deep storyline, but this one's deeper. The presentation of Tenchu Wrath of Heaven takes advantage of the PlayStation 2's hardware, and at the, at the time, they looked great, and still are great to this day, and so the best drafts you'll see on the PlayStation 2. The character models look very detailed and, and full of life, even though some of the faces are not the greatest. The backgrounds of the missions are huge and colorful and add the Feudal Japan feel to it, and definitely takes advantage of PlayStation 2's hardware as well. Even the cutscenes look, look great too, and the cutscenes cannot get any, any better than that, even though, um, like I mentioned, the, the faces don't look the greatest in some of the cutscenes and the mouth movement isn't the best, but still. Great game, game overall. The sound in Tenchu Wrath of Heaven is improved sound over the first two games. The first improvement here is the Japanese audio option. They give you the option to use Japanese voices and that is a plus because the English voice acting is awful. No motion to their voices at all. 
And you don't have to use a code to unlock the voices like I did in Tetris Stealth Assassins. They're right here and all the lines are in Japanese when you turn the option on. Not like in Tetris Stealth Assassins where parts of the game are still in English. It's a great option to have for sure, especially because it takes place in feudal Japan. It's gonna to fit really well and you're gonna want to use it. Music is great, same as before, so, so nothing else to say about there. It's great music, it feels like that, like that, that 16th century ninja stealth genre there and it fits perfectly. The gameplay of Tenchu Wrath of Heaven is fun and improved for the most part. Still has some holdover problems though from the, from the first two games, but we'll get to that later. This game gives you the feel as you are ninja, not without the flaws like I mentioned, but still. The game keeps the stealth nin ninja feel to it when you sneak up on the bad guys and very stealthy sneak into the shadows. Or you can attack them head on if you want to give yourself a challenge there. And yes, th it will be a challenge for sure, but I'm fine with challenge. Challenge is fine. The controls have also improved over the first two games. No more stiffness when you jump, no more stiffness when you move or turn, and like they improved it definitely and it feels a lot smoother. You move with the left analog stick this time, which me I prefer using the D-pad more, but still moving around and everything is a lot smoother this time, even if you, you have to use the left analog stick. Also the badass weaponry we have this time, like our shurikens, grenades, smoke bombs, we have poison rice and more and more and stuff, just like a lot of badass as, as weapons there for sure. We also cannot forget our trusty repel is back again, even more fun than before, and it just feels a lot smoother when you use it for sure. Even using your weapons in general feels smoother because they give you the option to, to, to aim to help you. The last two games did not do this, but it wasn't a bad thing, it just, here it improves us all. And after you beat the story with Ricky Mora and Ayami, like I said, you unlock a third character, which I cannot say who it is, but you'll find out. I had a great time with Tenchu Wrath of Heaven, definitely showed that the improvements were already made here and it worked well in the end. But now we got the negatives here. This is the third game in the franchise, and still no option to change the invert aim. The invert aim is still mandatory, and it takes a little time to get used to if you're used to normal aim, where like up, up aims up, down aims down. It's just I don't like that little invert thing. It just it's it it it, it takes time to get used to, and I wish that they had the option to take to put it in normal aim and got an invert aim. The camera is not the best here. I did not mention the camera in the first two games because. It was our stand standable because like like there were improvements to be made, but the camera definitely shows issues here where it can it, it can get stuck at times and like you you'll, you'll be facing the wrong direction trying to fight the bad guys. Some of the areas and certain levels look way too similar to one where you could get, you can easily get stuck and get lost. But those are the only complaints I have though. Final thoughts: If you liked Tenchu Stealth Assassins and Tenchu 2 Birthless Stealth Assassins. Tenchu Wrath of Heaven will not disappoint you at all. I'm going to be taking off some points here, but the score I'll be giving it, once again, is a 9 out of 10. Yeah, this is the, this is the first me where I gave all three of the games like that the same score, but they're all fun in their own way. It's just some improvements were made and some deprovements were there too for all the games, so 9 out of 10 is the best score to give it. Now when it comes to these three Tenchu games, which one do, do, do I recommend for you all? Well, that's up to you. You decide, because they're all great in their own ways and all and all and all great the same way too like with the same high scores they give they, they all got nines out of ten so you decide which which one you want if you want a prequel get Tenchu 2 Stealth Assassins if you want the first one then get Tenchu Stealth Assassins or so if you want like 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 with the Japanese audio stuff like that where it's smoother get Tenchu Wrath of Heaven all three of these games are great and are great equally their own ways so whatever game you pick you'll you'll have fun for sure this is all I gotta say here for my Tenchu series review we had a good time playing as, as, as stealthy ninjas here, but now we gotta get this, this episode has come to a close. Now, if you like what you see here, subscribe, like, comment down below, join my Discord group, TT Bird Gamers United, because also we're looking for more people to join. Links in the description below. It will not quit for 24 hours, so just click away. Pretty much all I gotta say is Tony, peace and out, have a great day, and all the stuff you join my Facebook group, TT Bird Gamers group, and my Facebook page, TT Bird Gamers, so click on those as well. Pretty much all I gotta say is Tony, peace and out, and see you all in episode 176. Will be another multi-part review. What will I cover? Find out. Which all I gotta say. Take care, everybody.